This is QTV News and I am Jenna Basanko coming up. November 2nd is a United Nations recognized day observed globally to draw attention to the issue of impunity for crimes against journalists. We hear the thoughts of the head of Gambia's press union. The Chief Justice of the Gambia, Hassan B. Jallo, launches his latest book titled Prosecuting International Crimes, Recollections and Reflections. We hear what happened at the launch. Gambia's delegation to the ECOWAS Parliament pays a visit to the Gambia-Senegal border in Sabi, Basse, to sensitize the locals about the ECOWAS protocol on free movement. A job creation scheme aimed at women and youth, the United Nations Capital Development Fund is launched in Lower River Region. Those are our top stories and now the news in detail. Stay with us. Today is United Nations Recognized Day observed globally and set aside to bring an end to impunity for crimes against journalists in the world. In joining the world to commemorate this day, the Gambia Press Union has acknowledged the significant progress the Gambia has registered since the change of regime during December 2016's presidential elections. However, the GPU in a statement expresses concern over violent attacks on journalists and the failure of the police to thoroughly investigate such incidents. Our Momodou Lamin Choi spoke to the GPU president and this is his report. Impunity for crimes against journalists is an enemy of democracy and the rule of law. According to observers, Gambia has taken significant steps away from such terrible conditions against the press. As the world commemorates to end impunity for crimes against journalists, the Gambia Press Union is with the impression that there have been improvements when it comes to impunity for crimes against journalists in the Gambia. Celebrate as a fraternity, as media, um, and as journalists is the fact that um, there has been significant improvement when it comes to impunity for crimes against journalists in this country in consideration of where we came from as a country. We've not seen since the new government came to power, we've now seen the systematic abuse um, of journalists, including killings, including, you know, state-sponsored disappearances, torture and stuff. That's a um, significant improvement. The GPU also expresses appreciation of the efforts of the government to address past human rights violations, but indicates that attacks on journalists remain a concern. After 22 years of dictatorship, Gambia is in a transitional justice process which encompasses looking into detail at past human rights violations, including journalists. The president of the Gambia Press Senior, Srif Bojang Jr., says that they are hopeful that in the end there will be justice for journalists who were victims of the past Jame administration. In response to an ECOWAS ruling in February 2018, the Gambia government paid compensation to four journalists whose rights were violated by the former regime. However, the GPU president reminds the government of its obligation to international law to complete the compensation process in the interest of democracy. There is a pending case. The case of Musa Selikan, compensation for Musa Selikan has still not been paid. So we called on the government by the ECOWAS court. So we called on the government. Discussions were on and then they stalled. And as far as I'm concerned, discussions, discussions over the payment of compensation to Musa Selikan has been reopened. So we, we called on the government to effect this payment in the interests of democracy. Through concerted efforts of Gambian, there is now a relatively favorable atmosphere for the practice of journalism compared to the past. Surif Bojang Jr. sends a message to media practitioners encouraging them to practice the profession without fear or favor to serve public interest and hold government to account. I want to encourage them that um, Gambia Press Union will always be there to support them, to stand by them, and to tell them that um, in this union, their own union, they have a tool and they have an organ that will always fight for their right and that will always be with them through thick and thin. 
journalists in a democracy serve as communication link between government and the people for socio-economic development, which includes creating an informed citizenry. In too many countries, journalists who serve in this regard have always become prey to rogue government, leading to their torture and death. Impunity for these killers has to end. Mumud Lamin Choi for QTV News. The Chief Justice of the Gambia, Hassan B. Jallo, has launched his latest book titled Prosecuting International Crimes, Recollections and Reflections. At a ceremony held at Q City, the chairman of the Q Group, Mohamed Ja, played to buy a copy of the book for all the first year law students at the University of the Gambia. And Sumana Isunyasi attended the event and he files in this report. Launched by one of Africa's most successful business leaders, Chairman of the Q Group, Mohamed Ja. The book, Prosecuting International Crimes, Recollections and Reflections, is a personal account of Chief Justice Hassan Jalo's recollection of his experience as the Chief Prosecutor of the UN Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda in the aftermath of what has been described as the darkest episode of Africa's recent history, the Rwandan genocide of 1994, in which thousands were massacred. In his statement, Professor Henry C. Alisigwe, Dean, at the Faculty of Law at the University of the Gambia highlighted the role played by Justice Jalo in restoring peace in Rwanda, adding that the book will serve as a great source of guidance for international criminal justice administrators. This book is a piece of treasure for all lovers of justice and the International Criminal Justice Administration. I'm bequeathed unto humanity by no less a person than he who was at the forefront in bringing perpetrators of international crimes to account for their crimes. I wish to state, however, that notwithstanding all efforts are promoting international criminal justice administration and holding perpetrators to account, the real panacea to avoiding such humanitarian catastrophe remains our recognition that we owe ourselves individual responsibility to advance the cause of humanity. Delivering his statement, Chairman of the Kill Group, Mohamed Ja, praised the author's ability to develop an all-round documentation of some of the world's most heinous events in recent history, and the role he played as an international prosecutor in bringing about peace and providing justice for victims on the global stage. He went on to challenge Gambians to take part in the country's development process, adding that the time has come for Gambians to take charge of their destiny by taking part in the country's decision-making process. Mr. Jar also pledged to buy a copy of the book for each of the first-year law students at the University of the Gambia. It is very easy to criticize, but unless we assume our historic responsibility and become active agents of change, and our democratic rights as citizens to hold our leaders and our governments accountable for their policies, decisions and actions would have been misplaced. By all means, exercise your constitutional right to censor government where necessary, but also to be ready to engage constructively with our government to advance the socio-economic development of our beloved country. Assume a practical role in determining the new strategy direction of our country. Today, the Gambia needs all its citizens with the capacity and the know-how to engage in political and economic processes and become change makers where one lives in the diaspora or resides at home. For his part, His Lordship Chief Justice Hassan B. Jalo says the book is a product of the challenges of his journey in delivering justice for everyone. He went on to reveal that he dedicates his latest work to former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan for what he called his selfless service to humanity. I am confident that we shall, together, as a nation, rise successfully to the challenges of reconciliation and that with our indomitable spirit, national spirit for peace, justice and solidarity, with the lessons from the past processes, both national and international, and with the help of this large contingent which Dr. Morong has already indicated, of Gambians who have had a tremendous experience in working on international justice issues, that we shall make the right choices, choices, and we will make choices that will promote and maintain peace, 
justice and accountability in our community. This outstanding piece authored by one of Africa's most decorated prosecutors was reviewed by the Dean, Faculty of Law, University of the Gambia, Professor Henry C. Alisigwe, Chief of Legal Affairs, UN Assistance Mission in Afghanistan, Dr. Alaji Marong, Chief Legal Counsel, African Development Bank, Usman Jame, and Dr. George Mugwanya, Appeals Counsel, Office of the Prosecutor, International Criminal Court. The event was also attended by the Speaker of the National Assembly, senior government officials, political leaders, and a cross section of society. Antoine Esonyasi for KTV News. As part of efforts to promote the movement of people and goods in accordance with the ECOWAS protocol, the Gambia's delegation to the ECOWAS parliament based in Abuja on Saturday visited the Gambia-Senegal border in Sabi Basse to sensitize the locals about this ECOWAS protocol. Ali Usise has the rest of that. The primary purpose of the ECOWAS protocol on free movement of persons and goods within the sub-region is to integrate the 15 West African markets for goods, capital and labor so the community can advance harmoniously as one for sustained economic growth and development. However, this has been undermined by the deplorable conduct of some officials at some community borders that jeopardize these provisions becoming a reality. It is well known that immigration officers at these various border posts extort money from West African travelers and traders alike, demanding bribes. The event was attended by security chiefs and traditional leaders in the region. Head of the Gambia's five-member delegation to the ECOWAS parliament, Keba Kebaro of Combosat, emphasized the importance of this initiative. And I think it is about time as parliamentarians, as administrators, as also leaders and stakeholders that are involved in this. We organize annual bantabas where we can talk about issues dealing with the free movement of people, goods and services. So it is against this background that we have selected to do one in Sabi in 2019. We did one in Kerhaib last year that also coincided with the opening of the bridge the Trans-Gambia Bridge in, in Farafene. So we will continue to do that as Equus parliamentarians. And there are so many other key things, Equus programs in the area of agriculture, development of uh, electric city and also health, Wahoo. So all those are issues that are dealt at the, at the Equus parliament. And for us as members of the Equus parliament, our role here is to reach out to the beneficiaries, that is the electorates of our respective countries, to talk about these issues. Fanta Boyang Samatemane, governor of URR, in our welcome speech, applauded the Gambia's delegation to the ECOWAS parliament for conceiving the idea of organizing such an event at the Sabi border. Or the government of the Gambia attached great importance to the attainment of the ECOWAS vision 2020. And as legislative arm um, through the ECOWAS parliamentarians, the commitment will continue to provide the much needed coordination in the governmental machinery with respect to regional integration. And when we talk about free movement of goods and services, we are not talking about um, people putting law into their own hands and they want to move, move with illegal goods from one country to another and wouldn't want any security intervention. I think these are issues that should be looked at carefully. Several other speakers, including Mohamed Mankazi of Basse, Watmodo Tumanja of Banjul South, Madar Jang of Lower Nyomi, and Samba Jala of Nyamina Dankunku, all part of the delegation to the ECOS Parliament, spoke about the importance of the ECOS Protocol for achieving economic integration. Officials from the Trade Ministry, Immigration and Customs also gave an overview of their mandates regarding the protocol. The event was also attended by a delegation from the Senegalese Transport Union. Reporting for QTV News from the border settlement of Sabi in Basse, Upper River Region, I am Ali Usise. A four-year livelihood project aimed at creating employment for women and youth in LRR was launched by Jikoko Ward with support from the United Nations Capital Development Fund, UNCDF. Lamin Dabo has the rest of that. The community-driven project came as a result of efforts from the Jikoko Committee's initiative with support from the UNCDF. Focusing on creating income-generating avenues for underprivileged groups in society, mainly women and the youth. The councillor for Jikoko Ward, Bakari Fadera, shed light on the steps taken by the Ward Committee leading to the creation of the initiative. <laughs> 
Our ward is a place where the needs of the people are many, and as a committee, we decided to seek for support from organizations so as to enable our people to venture into income generating activities. We then came up with a project for a big garden with three components, including poultry, tree nursing, and horticulture. There will also be a borehole to ensure easy access to water. We are very much thankful to UNCDF for their outstanding support. Adama Juf, a representative of the UNCDF, explains the cash for work initiative component of the project, intended to increase the income level of women and youth to save them from being vulnerable. She went on to express her appreciation of the project. This identify their um, projects and then within those projects they will be employed where they will be given um, uh, job opportunity to work into the project and then at the same time they will be receiving funds. Then those funds will be able to help them in their livelihood to be able to have financial independence and be able to take care of their own responsibilities. Vice Chairman of Mansa Konko Area Council, Almamo Sisi, urges the youth of Jikoko Ward to take ownership of the project and make it sustainable. He emphasized that the council will work with all the necessary stakeholders to realize the aims and objectives of the project. We are, by, we can all, we are all stakeholders in this thing. Um, I think we need to make an ownership of this project. Um, we, the council, that is a Masakonga Area Council, um, we hold this project or we are seeing this thing in uh, so many directions. Uh, like um, working with UNCDF, uh, they are complementing our efforts. So because of that, um, you know, we cannot do it alone as a development. We need other partners to join with you uh, so that you can achieve your desired goals. The United Nations Capital Development Fund makes public and private finance work for the poor in the world's 47th least developed countries. It expands the opportunities for individuals, households and small businesses to participate in the local economy, providing them with the tools they need to climb out of poverty and manage their financial lives. For QTV News, Lamin Alaj Funding Dabo. We will go with a short commercial break. When we return, we hear about the progress in the construction of the teacher training college in Basse and one of the Gambia's leading businessmen inaugurates an upgraded showroom. Stay tuned. Are you a shop owner, retailer, or working in other commercial industries? Customers are looking to buy things every day. Let them know where you are. Take part in QTV's marketplace and showcase your business to a large group of potential buyers. Call us on 32444444. Or send us an email at marketing at qtv.gm for more details. Man, you, don't know what I be. you can also get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. QTV Marketplace. Be noticed. With so many things to do in a single day, it's important to have a network you can trust. When there's family and friends to connect with and business calls to make, you need a network that is reliable and fast. Talk longer, browse faster, go farther and roam wider. When your network is solid, the world is your oyster. QCell, your trusted network in the Gambia. Welcome back from that short commercial break. If you're just tuning in, this is QTV News. 
the construction of the teacher training college in Basse is nearing completion. As Aliusisa reports, the college, once completed, will address the rural urban drift of those pursuing tertiary education. It was late last year that President Adam Abaro laid the foundation stone for the construction of this ultra-modern college campus in Basse. In less than a year, the construction is at its final phase in readiness for use. The college has classrooms, separate dormitories for both genders and staff quarters among others. Situated between Basse and the border settlement of Sabi, the project is funded by the MRC Holland Foundation and will serve as an extension to the main teacher training college in Brikama, West Coast region. The foundation also intends to support government in delivering 1,000 classrooms across the country. Once operational, this college here in Basse is expected to cut down the number of students that travel from this part of the country to the Gambia College for tertiary education. Over the years, people around this part of the country have blamed governments for centralizing tertiary education within the greater Banjul area. Among those welcoming this development is the National Assembly member for Basse Constituency, Mohamed Magazi. Well, uh, definitely this is uh, a great development for this region. Uh, hence, uh, it is also in line with uh, decentralization because uh, we cannot talk about the development of a country uh, without focusing on decentralized, uh, de decentralizing institutions or services that people are in need for. So having this college in this upper river region is a great development as it is providing access to tertiary education in this region. How soon do you think this college will be operational? Uh, according to the information that I have received uh, through my interactions, um, by next semester, this college will be fully opera uh, operationalized. Mr. Magazi hopes that students will take advantage of the college to acquire higher education closer to home. I'll be very proud of this college. Hence, uh, having this college uh, is the translation of the constitution of the Gambia, section 30. Uh, that reads uh, that uh, um, every uh, Gambian children or Gambian child should have equal opportunity and facility if you come to education. But, uh, the lecturers also who are coming to come and lecture in this uh, region, uh, they may also have their conditions, um, but which uh, if it is being listened to carefully, uh, the ministry also can attach, you know, a consideration to their, 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 their observations or whatsoever, they are the issue that they will raise. For in order to have them here in this region to come and deliver in you know, um, quality education to would-be students in this college. Educationists say the Basel College will contribute immensely to what's addressing the challenges linked to access, quality and equity. Reporting for QTV News from Basel in the Upper River region, I am Aliou Sisse. General Engineering, a leading engineering company in the Gambia, has upgraded its showroom located along the Manjai Kunda Highway. A ceremony was held at the company premises to showcase the new showroom with new lines of products. I was there and this is my report. The event brought together business clients, friends and the general public to be introduced to new quality and affordable products in the new upgraded showroom. General Engineering is a retail and wholesale distributor of electric materials such as wires, switches, distribution boards, fuse boxes, fire alarms, generators, amongst others. Other items in the showroom include kitchen tools, office materials, and often bakery spare parts that Gambians previously traveled to Senegal or overseas to purchase. The proprietor of Gambia Engineering, Charles Mbai, was recently appointed the official agent of Kitchen Pro and Technopoint in Dakar. The chairman of the Q Group, Mohamed Ja, has worked with the proprietor of General Engineering, Charles Mbai, for the past 15 years. He congratulated Mbai for his wonderful achievements and spoke about their journey as business partners. Most of the electrical materials we buy for the Q Group, we buy it from Mr. Mbai's shop um, for two reasons. One is because Mr. Mbai is a Gambian and two because he delivers quality service and products. Those are the two things we look at and uh, as you know our motto 
you know, our, you know, the way we do business, we want to, we have the senior boss concept, you know, where we patronize each other, you know, uh, and that is why we have taken the bold step of, of, of doing that. In, I must say that it's not only Mr. Mbai's company, we have a lot of Gambian companies we, we patronize. Uh, most of the things we buy, we buy them from Gambian owned companies. But of course, um, our two main um, uh, objectives is to promote Gambian business. Nana Gray Johnson, an uncle to Charles Mbai, has this to say about his nephew. Mr. Mbai is one of the most enterprising men I've known in this country. Initiative, the, uh, the, the size of his heart and desire for excellence. He has always been a man proposing things and pursuing them and looking at how to make things better. And he has won me over because of that energy in him that I quickly jumped to his innovations and things that he, he dreams up. The proprietor of General Engineering, Charles Mbai, spoke about his motivation to upgrade the showroom. This is something that I normally do every three, four, five years. Sometimes I walk in the shop and I look at the design of the shop. I say, look, I'm fed up with this setup. But this time I said, let me go big because I have some agency. I've been appointed for two agencies, one for TechnoSuit and the other one is for Pro Kitchen. TechnoSuit is a company that makes lifts in France, but they collaborate with a company in Germany. So when well, they give me the agency, so I said, I think I need to do some rebranding and redo the shop. Take it to a different level. Mr. Mbai Foda gave tips to broaden the awareness of entrepreneurs. The tip I will give to any entrepreneur outside, any, whatever profession you have, you don't have to go into any profession by accident. You need to have passion for the profession. If you don't have passion for it, forget it. And I'm somebody who is very rough sometimes when I'm doing my electrical works. I want to see things perfectly. And sometimes I have argument with my staff, it's not this way, this is the way you have to do it. And sometimes they don't want to take patient. They say, saying in English, they say patient dog, eat fat bone. So I have been patient over the years, trying to streamline my profession, trying to do it professionally, you know, and this is the result today. Mbai promises to keep upgrading his business by bringing affordable, durable and recommended brands to provide a one-stop engineering shop for customers. Before we end this news bulletin, let's recap our main headlines. November 2nd is a United Nations recognized day observed globally to draw attention to the issue of impurity for crimes against journalists. We hear the thoughts of the head of Gambia's press union. The Chief Justice of the Gambia, Hassan B. Jallo, launches his latest book titled Prosecuting International Crimes, Recollections and Reflections. We hear what happened at the launch. Gambia's delegation to the ECOWAS Parliament pays a visit to the Gambia-Senegal border in Sabi Basse to sensitize the locals about the ECOWAS protocol on free movement. That is all we have for you in this edition of QTV News. Join us same time tomorrow for more news. Thank you for your company and have a nice weekend.